The first step of protein analysis usually involves protein purification from the source. First, cells are broken open to release their proteins into a solution called a crude extract. A variety of purification methods can separate proteins based on different properties. Two of the early steps include salting out and dialysis. Salting out separates proteins based on their solubility, which is a complex function of pH, temperature, salt concentration, and other factors. The addition of certain salts such as ammonium sulfate can selectively precipitate some proteins, while others remain in solution. Dialysis is a procedure that separates proteins based on size. The extract is placed in a bag or tube made of semi-permeable membrane, which retains large proteins within the bag or tube. Dialysis can also be used to remove ammonium sulfate from the salting out procedure. The most powerful methods of protein purification include column chromatography, in which a porous solid column with appropriate chemical properties serves as the stationary phase and a buffer solution, which serves as the mobile phase, migrates through it. The ion exchange chromatography separates proteins based on their net electric charges. The column consists of synthetic polymer known as resin, with bound charged groups. In cation exchange chromatography, the column is negatively charged, typically consists of carboxymethyl cellulose, abbreviated as CMC. As a result, proteins with net negative charge elutes first. In anion exchange chromatography, the column is positively charged typically consists of diethylaminoethyl cellulose, abbreviated as DEAEC. As a result, proteins with net positive charge elutes first. The size exclusion chromatography, also known as gel filtration chromatography, separates proteins based on size. The column consists of crosslink polymer beads with engineered pores or cavities of a particular size. Larger proteins cannot enter these pores and are eluded first. Smaller proteins enter these cavities and take longer to be eluded. The affinity chromatography separates proteins based on specificity. The beads in the column have covalently attached chemical group known as ligand that can bind to specific proteins. Protein of interest is often linked to a special affinity tag through genetic engineering. Proteins linked to GSD tag, which stands for glutathione S-transferase tag, will bind to glutathione column. Proteins linked to histidine 6 tags will bind to nickel column. Proteins linked to avidin will bind to biotin. Column chromatography can be enhanced by the use of HPLC, which stands for High Performance Liquid Chromatography, which makes use of high-pressure pumps to speed the movement of protein molecules down the column. Another important technique of protein purification involves gel electrophoresis. As I mentioned in my previous video on biotechnology, gel electrophoresis can also be used to separate DNAs and RNAs. The most common type of gel electrophoresis that separates proteins is SDS page. SDS stands for sodium dodosyl sulfate, and PAGE stands for polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. Polyacrylamide is the cross-linked polymer that makes up the gel. SDS is a reducing agent that denatures proteins and coats it with negative charge to ensure each protein has a similar charge to mass ratio so that proteins can be separated based on mass only. Another chemical reagent known as beta-mercaptyl ethanol, abbreviated as BME, cleaves the disulfide bond. Once the charge is applied over the gel, smaller proteins would move faster towards the cathode end and larger proteins would move slower. Isoelectric focusing separates proteins based on isoelectric point, also known as PI, which is the pH in which a protein's overall charge is neutral. A pH gradient is established by a mixture of organic acids and bases, and each protein migrates until it reaches the pH that matches its pi. Two-dimensional gel electrophoresis combines isoelectrical focusing on the horizontal axis and SDS page on the vertical axis to separate proteins based on both charge and mass, providing a very sensitive analytical method. At each stage of the purification process, it is important to quantify the amount of protein present. For proteins that are enzymes, the amount in a given extract can be measured or assayed in terms of the catalytic effect the enzyme produces. After each purification step, enzyme activity is assayed. One unit of enzyme activity is defined as the amount of enzyme causing transformation of one micromolar of substrate to product per minute at 25 degrees Celsius under optimal conditions of measurement. An example of enzyme activity is the NADH and NADPH concentration measured by a spectral photometer set at 340 nanometer, which can be used to measure enzyme activity of dehydrogenases. 
In addition to enzyme activity, the total protein concentration is also measured to calculate the specific enzyme activity, which is the number of enzyme units per milligram of total protein. The specific activity is a measure of enzyme purity. It increases during purification of an enzyme and becomes maximal and constant when the enzyme is pure. A protein's primary structure can be determined by amino acid sequencing or tendon mass spectrometry, which will be talked about in a moment. A protein's secondary structure can be measured by circular dichroism spectroscopy, which measures the differences in absorption of left-handed versus right-handed circularized light. The alpha, helix, and beta conformations each have characteristic circular dichroism spectra. Secondary structure can also be measured by the Ramachandran plot, which describes the dihedral angles phi and psi associated with each amino acid residue. Both alpha helix and beta conformations have dihedral angles that fall within a relatively restricted range of sterically allowed structures. The tertiary and quaternary structures are typically determined by X-ray crystallography. As an incident X-ray overlaps with an electron, it is elastically scattered, generating a second wave that has the same wavelength, but different direction than the incident wave. Constructed interference results in dark spots on the detector. Each spot in each diffraction image is analyzed by computer program to generate the protein's 3D structure. The problem with X-ray crystallography is that proteins are often very hard to crystallize. Other methods to determine protein 3D structure includes nuclear magnetic resonance, which is based on the intrinsic magnetic spin of each nuclei. Cryogenic electron microscopy, abbreviated as cryo-EM, uses electron microscopes to examine proteins at a very cold temperature. Finally, bioinformatics, which is the application of computational methods to analyze biological data, can also be used to model and predict protein structures. There are two main preparatory steps to protein sequencing. The first step involves protein purification. If the protein contains more than one polypeptide chains linked by disulfide bonds, it needs to be cleaved. There are two methods of breaking the disulfide bonds. Oxidation by performic acid or reduction by dithiorheotol, abbreviated as DTT, or beta mercaptal ethanol, abbreviated as BME, which is followed by carboxymethylation by iodyl acetate to make the reaction irreversible. Two basic properties can be determined to confirm the identity of the protein. The amino acid composition of the protein can be determined by hydrolyzing a sample of the protein in 6-normality hydrochloric acid and putting it through an amino acid analyzer. The relative molecular weight of the protein can be determined by SES page or gel filtration chromatography. The next step of protein sequencing often involves the identification of the amino terminus and the carboxy terminus. The amino terminus can be chemically modified with 1-fluoro-2,4-dinitrobenzene, abbreviated as FDMB, as well as denzyl chloride and dapsyl chloride. The amino terminal is then hydrolyzed to determine the amino acid. The amino terminus can also be determined enzymatically by amino peptidase. The carboxy terminus can be determined by carboxy peptidase. The polypeptide chain is often cleaved into smaller peptides by other peptidases. Aspartate and protease cleaves the amino site of aspartate and glutamate. Pepsin cleaves the amino site of leucine and aromatic amino acids phenylalanine, tryptophan, and tyrosine. VA protease cleaves the carboxy site of aspartate and glutamate. Chymotrypsin cleaves the carboxy site of aromatic amino acids. Trypsin cleaves the carboxy site of basic amino acids lysine and arginine. The amino acid composition and the relative molecular weight of each cleavage product can then be determined. The amino acid sequence of smaller peptides can also be determined by the MN degradation procedure, in which the amino terminal residue is determined one by one. The peptide is first reacted with phenylisothiocyanate under mildly alkaline conditions, which converts the amino terminal amino acid to a phenothiol carbamoyl adduct, abbreviated as PTC adduct. The peptide bond next to the PTC adduct is then cleaved in an acidic condition. The amino acid is extracted with organic solvents and converted to the more stable phenothiol hydantoin derivative under acidic condition and identified. The overall amino acid sequence of the protein can be reconstructed from the sequences in overlapping fragments. Another method of protein sequencing is tendon mass spectrometry. Mass spectrometry is based on the ionization of molecules in a vacuum, which is then introduced to either an electric field or a magnetic field to determine their mass-to-charge ratio and deduct the mass. 
In tandem mass spectrometry, a solution containing the protein is first treated with protease or chemical reagent to hydrolyze it to shorter peptides. The mixture is then injected into two mass spectrometers. In the first mass spectrometer, the peptide mixture is sorted so that only one selected peptide is further analyzed. The selected peptide then travels through a vacuum chamber between the two mass spectrometers which further fragment the peptide with a collision gas, such as helium or argon. The second mass spectrometry then measures the mass-to-charge ratio, abbreviated as MZ, of the charge fragments. B-type ions are derived from amino terminal side, and Y-type ions are derived from the carboxy terminal side. Each successive peak in a given set has one less amino acid than the peak before. The difference in mass from peak to peak identifies the amino acid that was lost in each case thus revealing the sequence of the peptide. 